Hi folks, we're at LR Workshop. I've got three Defenders here, which have had various states of resprays. This one's had one respray, this one's had two resprays, and that one's had some paintwork done on it. I'm going to be showing you clues to look for if you've had full or potentially partial resprays on a Defender. Maybe a Defender that you didn't own from new, you don't really know what its previous history could have been. I'm going to be looking at whether it's had a colour change, things to look for, or whether it hasn't had a colour change, some of the more inconspicuous things to look at. Uh, we're specifically talking about resprays, we're not talking about rollers, roller, roller paint is very easy to spot, it's rough texture and heaven forbid it's got Raptor on it that st sticks out like a sore thumb. So essentially first we're going to look at if it's had a colour change. There's two ways of doing a colour change, there's the cheap way and there's the proper way. First thing to look for is if it's had a cheap respray is the bulkhead will be a different colour than the rest of the vehicle and potentially under the bonnet. Bonnet is a bit easier because you can take this off, but they would essentially, you know, cover all this, mask this out, and paint the rest of the vehicle, uh, leaving the bulkhead because that's quite fiddly. You're not going to be able to respray that without taking a hell of a lot of stuff off. So that's the quick way to do it. You'll see that quite commonly. The other way is to check the door frames on the inside. They will be a different colour than the outside of the vehicle because painting the inside of the vehicle and particularly the rear tub and the floor and everything, you've got to take all the trim out and all the doors and everything. So that will also be a cheap respray that the door, the inside of the doors are a different color. The proper way to do it would be to take all this out and respray everything. And so all these white bits would become a different color, for example. And that was done on a lot of airport defenders. You'll see a lot of airport defenders that were painted yellow. They would have been originally kind of Chawton white or Fuji white, something like that. And they were fully resprayed yellow. Those ones can be spotted. Well, the fact they're yellow, Land Rover never did a factory yellow color only for a couple of special kind of pre-production or prototype kind of vehicles, uh, I believe. But the way to spot those ones otherwise is the wear line down here. You you can see on this one, you know, defenders very commonly wear as people get in with clunky boots and, and rub rub the paint off. Here, any respray will start to show through. It would have gone through the original top layer and then you'll see the layer below that. A lot of dealers will take photos of defenders with the doors open and you can see like the whole cab in there. In that example you'll get a, get a good view of the sill rail here to see if it's had a respray. Maybe though the respray is a really great respray, it's been resprayed in a factory colour um, that's not obvious to spot like yellow and maybe this hasn't started wearing yet, what can you do then? Well, on later vehicles this is when you can come and look on the VIN plate and by this I mean kind of 2000s onwards you come and look at the paint code here. So we've got 603, now I can tell you that's short and white. And on LR Workshop, there is a list of paint codes. The link is in the description, where you can come and check this against the paint codes. Um, if you don't have this on your VIN, then you can also go to LR Workshop and put in your registration number. The link is also in the description to the kind of the database we've got of all the defenders in the UK. And you can that will tell you what its original factory paintwork would have been probably for late 90s vehicles onwards. Older vehicles are a lot harder to come by that information. With that, you'll then be able to tell whether you know it's the same paint uh, colour that it came from the factory with or not. Now taking the example, if you don't know the VIN code and you don't know what the proper paint colour should be, or you know that it should be white because on the V5 it's white and it was a s vehicles in that era came in those kind of colours, for example. But how do you know if this is the white that was in the factory? Well, also on LR Workshop, in the database part, you can go and look at examples of, of defenders of those factory colours. So you can look at the factory colour, look at photos of defenders in that factory colour, and compare your paint against the paint of those defenders. Now this, for example, is Chawton White, and that is a resprayed Chawton White. It's never perfect to be able to compare photos of paintwork. It depends on the different lights and the angle and what the, what the reflectivity of the paint surface is and the, the surface that it's reflecting. Is it grass or is it tarmac, for example? Um, but it will give you some way, there's lots of photos on there as vehicles with factory paintwork from different angles, and for example, that will, that will help you kind of get an idea potentially of whether this is, you know, the white that's on your vehicle, that is the, it's correctly a white vehicle from the factory. Is it the same white that potentially it could have been when it, was, when it came out of the factory? So the link is in the description for that, go and check that out. Maybe it didn't get a full respray, maybe it only got a partial respray. Body panels, mismatched body panels are a good one to go off here. Now this, these are my BSE posts. I replaced a couple of years ago the video series. You can see the link on the screen. Um, I painted these Chawton White 
and this is alpine white. This is 25-year-old alpine white, so it's very faded and what have you. You can probably just about tell the difference on camera. It's quite noticeable when you're close up, but not from far away. Um, I had these painted Chorton white because I eventually want to go to Chorton white on the whole vehicle. Um, but this was just a quick thing to on a galvanised uh, BC post to, to make it not stand out as much, basically, and to protect the galvanising a bit. But that's a kind of an obvious one. So we've got a body panel that's different here. Um, there's also been some paintwork done on this vehicle. So I replaced these with galvanised sill posts. I replaced, I painted this from a rattle can. It's now crazing all over it, but there's a slight different in colour there. And I don't know if you can pick this up on camera. There's a bit, there's a discoloration mark there. So that's been painted. And this is the original factory paint with my grubby fingers. Uh, bit of discoloration there. So that's kind of the DIY approach on that one, of where it's the same colour, it's a white vehicle, but there's different shades of vehicle, different panels. You can see where some DIY approach has been taken. Not too difficult on that one, to see that there's been some paintwork that's been done on the body. But what about the more inconspicuous stuff? Let's say, you know, it's a really good professional paint job. It's been done in the identical colour from the factory, same paint code, maybe the same, maybe it's been colour matched, for example. What can we look for on the vehicles to see if a paint job has been done, if a respray has been done on the vehicle. So I'm going to list through some of these now. Based on these vehicles, the evidence we can see from these two vehicles here. As I said, this one's had two resprays done, this one's had one respray done. Good first place to start is overspray. This is overspray on the chassis. So you see here, this is white. This isn't dirt. This is white paint overspray, because you see the very different line there. That's a masking line, and paint has somehow come through from you know the, the air, sp air spray and the air pressure has pushed through and dust has come onto the chassis here. So you can see that, that you know this is evidence that the respray, you would expect to see either a lot of corrosion or black paint or what have you on the chassis. This is of course, you can assuming that it hasn't been under sealed. We're also gonna look for masking marks. So these are places where the, the seals haven't been taken off and, and masking has been, has been put up, up to the edge of the seals. Now, window frame is a good place to look. This one doesn't have any overspray on the window frames, which means it's probably had a lower half respray only. Um, but there is evidence. We come to the back. Now, rubber trim like this, for example, these are buggers that get in and out. I don't know if you can see here, the paintwork kind of goes up to the rubber on there. So, just in there. So this has been masked and the paint has kind of bled through a little bit onto the rubber. Yeah, particularly these, these rear quarter light windows, uh, rear window here, these ones that have got rubbery seals. Um, these might have a bit of overspray under here. Typically look underneath and you might see it. This one I don't think has been resprayed, but there you can see also in there the trim. It's got white paint on it. So not the trim, the, uh, the foam seal. It's got white paint on, so that's more evidence of overspray there. There might be overspray on these, but these can be quite easily taken out and the evidence hid. But the, the, the more rubbery seals that wrap around windows, they're a bit more difficult to, to, to hide and mask off. Another place to look, door seals. They're typically hidden here, so if you pull the door seal down, there, we can quite clearly see evidence of masking line on there. Now this is a good place to see if how good of a colour match this will be factory paintwork and this will be respray colour paintwork on here so you can see also there's bits of you know this is they've taken this the the kind of tape off here and this is the sticky residue left behind and then that's been painted over on this side so there's a kind of a texture here there's a texture on there where we can see it's been resprayed we've also got a bit of overspray here see that in there up on the foam Another potential place to look. Very much, you want to look outside of normal eye line. From here, you wouldn't see it, but if you come up, change your angle, go down and go up underneath. For example, here's where, you know, crouching down, that's when you'll start to see some of these things, because it's things the painter, you know, might miss from their eye level. Here as well, we can see there's a, there's a kind of a paint mark where it's been eroded. The paint, the original paint, you know, the level is lower, and then it's been painted over the top. So we've got this kind of like, well, map of China, it looks like, really. There's some evidence of overspray here. This is the aircon, the aircon bracket, and you can see it's painted white. This would be black from the factory, and then we've got the uh, 
cables have got overspray on as well. Clear lines there. Here on the wing, the front of the wing here, next to the headlight, we've got these plastic, well they're called lock cuts, I think, or something like that, lock nuts. Um, but these are black, normally they're plastic. This has been resprayed over. Um, and there we can see a bit of the paintwork just flaking off slightly in the, in the original paintwork underneath. But you can only check this from, from taking the front panel off, this plastic trim panel, and then, only then would you be able to tell, because they're very easy to take off. It would be a pretty poor paint job if they tried to mask off around this plastic trim on the, around the headlight panel. This Defender has had some rear end damage previously, and ironically it's also had some more rear end damage. It got bashed in, it got reversed into a rock. You can see here there's filler. So this has been, had work done on this side, um, here, which is interesting because I didn't think this side had done that. The other side's definitely been done. And the way you can tell that, because here, factory, we've got spot welds. This crease, you know, this is part of the damage, but along here, along the ridge line where it bolts into the, the wheel arch on the inner side, the spot welds. We come round to this side, and we've got rivets, which is not the factory way. So we know this side has definitely been resprayed because these have been put in afterwards and then sprayed over the top. So I always knew this side had had damage and had been resprayed at some point. I wasn't so aware of the extent of what had gone on this side, um, but now this has shown it with the filler. That, that's quite a hefty chunk of filler in there. This has had some work as well. Ironically, now this is now probably going to have to have its third paint, you know, third paint touch-up to, when this uh, damage gets, gets fixed as well. On that note, this is probably a common one that a lot of people know. If you know this, then you're a certified Land Rover geek. Um, these rivets were painted from the factory because all of this is part of the rear tub construction. These rivets should be unpainted from the factory all the way down here because these, were, these panels were painted individually, this one, uh, and this one separately. These were put in on the production line, same as these as well. You can see uh, some of the evidence of that in the video in the linked in the description and in the top corner about how these were pieced together on the production line. Rear cross member bolts is also another clue. These would be unpainted from the factory. These are a bit rusty, but they've had paint on them uh, as well. So these have been painted, we're gonna assume as part of the respray as well, rather than a, an owner touching them up. And same with the bolts on the hinges as well. These have been painted over. Another clue to look for are the decals, where if they're missing, doesn't necessarily mean it's had a respray, but if they're in the wrong position from the factory, then it has had a respray, I would think, or just been put on by uh, someone that didn't position them properly. But in this case, we know that this is further evidence that it's had a respray, at least on this panel. We know there's evidence of resprays elsewhere, but essentially that should be down there. This should be a bit higher. Um, these are the correct, correct uh, stickers that go on, but they're just in the wrong positions. Um, it's always a telltale. People put these on in the wrong positions. It's um, it's very difficult to get the proportions right, but when they are right, they just look right, and you know that they kind of. So there, this one would be about here, for example. This one, a bit more higher, probably halfway between these two rivets is normally where this one goes. These two first vertical um, rivets here. It was part of the clues on my rest of the world spec defender because I I put these decals on um, because they weren't on there, and so I wanted to put them on because oh, it just looks correct. Well, ironically, these are grey rather than black, which is not age appropriate, but who's going to notice? And the last tip I've got for you is any body join lines that have been filled in. See that? That's filled in. It wouldn't have come from the factory like that. From the factory, it comes like this, i.e. it fills with crud and you need a toothbrush to be able to clean it properly. That's how it should. Now, these were bolted together before they were painted in the factory, but I assume, you know, it's about the angles or maybe the thickness of the paint. This has been quite thick paint that's been put on and it's completely filled in the gaps here. Makes it a lot easier for cleaning. Um, but uh, that's a telltale sign as well. So those were my clues and tips from these three defenders, but basically these two have had resprays. So these are direct evidence that resprays have occurred. If you know any other tips or clues of spotting a respray, on a Defender, then leave a comment down below. Subscribe for more Land Rover related videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.